Troubleshooting, this is the most fun module of instruction and the one with the most videos. So as we progress through the videos, we're going to cover the most frequently found problems with commercial refrigeration systems, uh, starting with dirty and iced evaporator or low airflow problems to oil logged evaporators and everywhere in between. But the thing you need to remember with uh, commercial refrigeration is there's a lot of different pressures and temperatures and box temperatures unlike um, residential air conditioning. So you really need to know what the system is supposed to be doing. And it's very difficult when you do commercial refrigeration to know what the system's temperatures and pressures are supposed to be when it's operating correctly because the installation and operation guides and specs are usually long gone. The systems have been hacked and repaired and re-put together time and time again by the time you get there so it's very difficult to do but we do have some uh, rules of thumb in the back of the book to help us and then um, I am also putting together a a cheat sheet for you that you can carry in your truck and that will be posted on the online classroom so you can download it. You also need to know what it's supposed to be do currently doing and be able to take accurate measures of the pressures and temperatures which part of the system is not operating correctly, the condensing side or the evaporating side or the defrost side. Also, what could cause that part of the system to fail or have a problem, and how can that problem be corrected? Pretty simple, but the key is, is what is the system supposed to be doing? Knowing that is critical. So the minimum information needed for proper troubleshooting is uh, air temperature entering the condenser, the condensing temperature, condenser split, and condenser subcooling and that you'll find on the cheat sheet for the different types of systems for your rule of thumb. Now with the evaporator you need the air temperature entering the evaporator, the evaporator temperature and the evaporator TD which is the temperature differential. Remember that's different than the evaporator split. You also need to know what the superheat of the evaporator is supposed to be. And then you answer the following four questions which is the key to your uh, successful troubleshooting. Is the, is the condensing temperature normal, low, or high? Same with the subcooling, same with the evaporator temperature, and same with the superheat as well. And for the sake of all of the troubleshooting examples that we're going to give here in this, these videos, normal means the condensing temperature is about 30 degrees higher than the ambient, plus or minus five degrees. We'll talk about that. That's also on the cheat sheet that you'll have. Subcooling, normal subcooling is between five and twenty degrees. The evaporator temperatures for a walk-in are ten degrees lower than the box temperature and the evaporator temperature for the regions is twenty degrees lower than the box temperature but there is a pretty wide uh, margin plus or minus for both of those. And then normal superheat is between five and twenty degrees. Now we're going to go through a quick review of the refrigeration cycle starting with the condenser going on to the metering device, the evaporator and the compressor just to get our heads in the ballgame and then we'll go on to the more complex troubleshooting uh, examples.